So a lot of you guys might have already seen this. I, for one, kind of missed it, but luckily, Dusty was looking out and sent me a tweet showing me this GPU that Asus and Noctua are working on. I guess this one's a 3070, but essentially it's a, it's a GPU with two A12X25s in there, and I saw that, and to that I said, we can build that, I think. And I got to look at the pictures on it, and it doesn't look too bad. I mean, at first I, I saw the Noctua fans, and I was like, ooh, they might be like a special special design, like a, like a weird roundish type frame, but then I kind of looked at this picture that's kind of a, from the end on, showing the like the uh, display display out. And it looks like it's just a regular A12X25. So it looks like it's two A12X25s in a custom frame on a GPA or a RTX 3070 in this case. And I think that's well within our wheelhouse to design and build. Now, I assume that when this card actually does come out, it's not only gonna have two Noctua fans, it's gonna have a Noctua cooler. So we might not be apples apples on like the cooling performance, but we can definitely get there in the looks and we all know that the A12X25 is a pretty quiet card, so if we do this, the card that we take to modify should perform just as good, if not better, and be quieter. But there's, there's a small problem though. I don't have a 3070. I don't really have a 30 series card, period, but we might have a way around that. Thank you to Digital Storm for sponsoring this video. Digital Storm's passion is chasing performance. Their motivation is delivering the world's most advanced PCs. With 20 years experience, their computers are built from the ground up with unmatched engineering and thermal design. Combine that with industry partnerships featuring the latest technology and they can deliver incredible power and performance that's trusted by enthusiasts, gamers, and content creators. Digital Storm is committed to improving their craftsmanship to drive a better customer experience. Each PC is handcrafted with attention to detail, including the placement of individual components and the routing of cables to improve airflow and upgradability. Building a PC is only part of the journey. Digital Storm is proud to back every customer with lifetime support from their team of in-house experts. Customers are family, and they're dedicated to resolving issues as quickly as possible. So if you're looking for a great experience, a great machine, and peace of mind, choose Digital Storm for your next PC build. Check the link in the description below, and thank you again to Digital Storm for sponsoring this video. So buying a 30 series card, not really in the cards. It's too expensive and I could use this an old GPU. I had like an old 5700 XT that has a little bit of issues but still works. But I want it to be as authentic as possible. So I need at least a 3060, 3070, or 3080. And then I remembered, I still have this Digital Storm PC. Now I gotta send this back. Obviously I haven't yet. And in this computer is a 3060, which would work for what we plan. Problem is, like I said, <laughs> Not my, not my computer, so I don't want to, you know, take apart a perfectly good functioning GPU and, well, break it, because there's always that chance. There it is. But, you know, I, I decided it's worth asking. So I, I asked Digital Storm if they cared if I, you know, took their GPU out of their PC they sent me since I still had it and tried to convert it to the one tweeted to me by Dusty. And they said, go ahead. So we have a 3060 to use. We're gonna try to take this apart, make it look like the, uh, the one shown in the tweet and hopefully see how it performs and kind of get an idea of what we might expect when the real card does come out. I guess I shouldn't unplug it yet. We should probably run this card in its stock configuration, run a little stress test to see how it cools. We're not gonna be changing the cooler per se. We're just gonna be changing the fans, but it'll still be interesting to see. We need to see at least the baseline. So let's do that first. Also, we need to listen to it because I assume that this card will be a lot louder than the one that we make with the Noctua fans, but you never know. So here's our guinea pig, and it is an Asus card, so that's cool. So maybe it'll look even more authentic. And here's a couple fans that we're gonna do, that we're using, and they kind of go on something like that. So that's the idea. Now we're gonna have to take this thing apart and see exactly how everything's held together. Uh, I also ran this, you know, in its stock configuration, and it was a bit loud, and actually, as it was cranked up to full full tilt, it had a weird rattling sound that I couldn't couldn't quite find. I don't know if it was a fan, I don't know if it was something in the case loose, but the noise level it kind of leveled out at was 52.5 at 100% fan, you know, with the power limit and temperature limits maxed out on MSI afterburner. And then about 10 minutes in, the temperature's kind of stabilized at 52 C. So that's kind of where we are now, and that's what we're gonna try to, try to beat here. And now we're gonna take this thing apart and figure out how we're gonna make this happen.
looking too bad so far. It's a nice flat surface. We got four mounting holes here. Should be relatively easy. Now what I like to do is um, kind of take some measurements of this, try to get a good measurement for the holes here, and then we'll print out like a template, like a just a nice flat piece of plastic that has these four holes, just to try to fine tune where the mounting holes are, because it's really what we need the most out of the setup. Also, we'll kind of measure the, the rough dimensions of this heat sink, just so we can build a, a reference of it in CAD, and then we will get the mounting holes situated, and then we'll start building the cooler on top of it, trying to match what the picture looks like. As you can see, our fans are just a little bit bigger than this cooler, so we gotta, we're gonna have to try to make that work somehow. They're gonna have to be roughly about here-ish to make sure we have access to the, the mounting holes, but I think we can make it work. So this is how I like to start any project like this. I just take some simple measurements of what I'm gonna be working with. So we wanna build this, so I wanna make a, a reference model of this that we can start adding parts to. And what I need to know is a rough length and a rough width, and then I wanna know the hole spacing for the mounting holes are gonna be used. And for the most part, they're pretty easy because I'm using this as my origin point, and I'm gonna measure down to this, this hole, and then the distance between these two, the pitch between these two, and they're pretty much in an L pattern. The only oddball is this guy. So I'm gonna be using this hole to this hole, which is about 82.5. Then I'm gonna go down back to this hole here and measure the pitch between those two, which is, is about 268. So I have our reference air cooler completed. I had a little bit more information, so I put this little extruded part on top so we can keep an eye on where, this is basically where the stock fan cables run. It's a little bit raised above everything else, so I just wanna keep an eye on it. I marked the origin point with a, a chamfer here. And then I also wrote video out and PCIe. So this is where the video out comes in, out of the card. This is where the card basically plugs into the motherboard so we can make sure we're oriented correctly when we get to designing the actual air cooler. As for the hole pattern, we just transferred over the measurements we made earlier, and we're gonna make a flat plate now that we can use to see if this actually matches the existing card, and when it does, we can continue on you know, in the design process. We don't have to waste a bunch of time on the printer. We don't have to. So the printer we're gonna use is this QIDI IFAST, and I, I just recently got this printer. I've been printing with it the last week or so, just kind of getting a feel for it. And I, and I really like it. But the main reason I want to use it is it's a dual extruder printer. And I currently have it set up to print in PLA and PVA, which means that no matter what kind of goofy geometry we d decide we're going to use, the support material can just be dissolved away in water, which, which is really awesome. Uh, I've been playing, playing around with it a lot. Other than that, it's fully enclosed. So we've got to worry about any warpage or stuff like that. And the biggest thing is that it is the largest printer I have. And I think we can print the entire shroud in one go and at least that's the plan which will make it easier to assemble less glue in and stuff like that now that everything's out of the printer let's talk about what you're going to need if this is something you want to do obviously you're going to need the heat sink from your gpu the 3d printed shroud this is a fan mount so the the idea here is to mount the fans to the uh the cooler and then uh the shroud around that then i also printed some plastic inserts just to give it some colors that match the uh the picture online i i didn't didn't put any branding on this. I mean, you could if you wanted to, if you wanted to download these, these drawings, I'll show you where to get them at the end of the video, but you could put whatever you wanted on them. You're gonna need some of these self-tapping case screws. I got four black ones just so I can, again, match the drawing. And then for the G-Force text, some inserts for that. Now, hopefully, if everything worked out good, this will all go together. So the first thing actually I wanna I want do is we're gonna take the shroud and apply all the uh, visual stuff.
<laughs> what do you think? Do you think it looks? I think it looks like the picture. Uh, I think it's pretty close to what the uh, the one that was tweeted to me looks like. Now it is a it is a thick boy, a little, probably a little thicker than the one shown, but I don't know. Um, it's it's looking pretty good. I would put this in my PC. The only concern I have it's. As long as it fits in the computer, this will be pretty awesome. Looks a little close, but I hope I didn't overlook anything. Now, I don't know if it's going to beat the cooling performance of this, the stock three fan shroud, but I'm hoping it does at least beat it in the noise level because the, the, the one that was on there, the stock one, was a bit loud and it also had a slight rattle to it. I'm hoping this is whisper quiet and gives a similar performance, but it won't know until we put it in there, so let's, let's give it a shot. The results. They're in. Now, what do you think? I'd be interested to see what you guys think. This, do you think it did better or worse than the stock card? But first, I think it just, it just looks better. I mean, as long as you have the room for it, it's very, it's very thick. But if you have the room for it in your case, I think it looks better than the stock card. Shocker. Now, when it came to temperatures though, it was about the same. I mean, it was exactly the same. This card stabilized at about 52 degrees after 10 minutes, just like the stock card did. However, these fans, they're still running full out. Came in much, much quieter. 43.2. It is so much lower, it's incredible. I, you can, the loudest thing in this PC went from the graphics card to probably the AIO pump or the case fans. And that's full 100% fan speed. If you turned everything down a little bit, you can make almost a silent PC as long as you got a good air cooler or a nice quiet, you know, water cool loop, something like that. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing. Now, when the real thing comes out, I imagine that the cooler they put on there will be a little shorter and the uh, the heat pipe and fin stack will be more optimized to the A12X25. But for a DIY solution, if you have an RTX 3060, you could do this. You could take away that stock shroud with those crazy loud small fans and replace it with two A12X25s and have a nice quiet graphics card that runs at the same temperatures. So yeah, I'll be putting this model and all the pieces and this and the original files, the STL files, step files on my Thingiverse account so you can go download it and put it on your RTX 3060. I don't know if it would fit on a 3070 or a 3080. If it was a Strix, maybe. Um, but you can take those models, you could modify them to whatever card you have or you can just use them as a template to make your own. But either way, I think this is awesome and I can't wait for the real thing to come out, see how it performs next to this thing. And then the brown, it's, it's growing on me. But thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure to like the video if you thought this was awesome. Get subscribed to the channel and head over to Thingiverse and print it out. And if you, if you make something sweet, make sure to tweet it at me. Until next time.